often mental health is not discussed or addressed as extensively as other health problems in the Philippines. And lawmakers want to change that through a proposed measure that seeks to ensure enough attention is given to it and not merely allow those plagued by it to suffer in silence. Melalis Morris returns with this report. Ramia, a college student, admitted that she has been experiencing depression for quite a long time now. Apart from her personal problems, she's also far away from her family, aggravated by the COVID-19 pandemic. Nagaroon ako ng anxiety depression that time, ma'am, na hindi ko alam yung gagawin ko. Lagi ako nanginginig. Hanggang ngayon, nagkakaroon pa rin ako ng anxiety. Kailangan mo lang siguro yung tapang ng loob sa sarili mo. In today's hearing of the House Committee on Welfare of Children, lawmakers highlighted the need to intensify the measures of the government in response to the mental health crisis in the country. Based on the 2021 report of the Department of Education, students who sought guidance counseling due to various personal problems grew to more than 700,000. Mental health conditions have undeniable and patent, patent social implications such as suicide, violence and accidents as manifested recently in several uh, schools. I enjoin everyone here today to use the rights-based approach to mental health. With this, the Department of Health, Department of Education and the Department of Social Welfare and Development all assure that they are implementing measures in line with the Mental Health Act. Aside from consultations, there are also hotlines and online chat portal that the public can have. Aside from uh, the, the National Plan of Action for Children and the training manual that I mentioned, Honorable Chair, last November 3, 2022, the Council for the Welfare of Children launched the Makabata Helpline. So we are in the right direction, but we need to do more. Meanwhile, in a separate hearing, the House Committee on Constitutional Amendments approved a resolution of both houses calling for a constitutional convention to amend the 1987 Constitution. And for the House Ways and Means Committee, they have also approved the proposed measure creating a mechanism through which non-resident tourists may refund their value-added tax. Earlier, President Ferdinand R. Marcus Jr. also expressed approval to this measure to further boost the country's tourism and economy. For his part, House Speaker Martin Romualdez also led the House leaders in expressing full support for the immediate ratification by the Senate of the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership or RCEP deal. Melalis Moras for the Nation.